Hi folks, hey Roland Martin here and welcome to my YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about the worst thing that can happen. Line disaster with the cast and reel, just how to manage your line and how to keep from getting these bad, bad backlashes. Well, there's a couple good ways and I'm going to show you. Let's get started. Okay, the first step in, in preventing and, and avoiding just terrible disasters with your line and backlashing a reel, particularly a casting reel, is to get the reel kind of adjusted the proper way to start with. Okay, now I, I kind of start a couple ways. I kind of start with a little bit of drag pressure. Uh, okay, I, I, I come, the spool has, a, has an adjustment right here on the side, this little adjustment right on the side of the spool. I'm gonna tighten it up so that when I, when I push it in, and I push the free spool button in, that's a little bit too tight. Okay. That's a little bit too tight. I'm going to loosen it there and start uh, tightening it up right there. That's just about, that's just about where it starts to, it starts to come off on its own weight. In other words, that's just a little a five inch Cinco with a little sixteenth of an ounce weight. And there's just enough spool pressure on here to just kind of keep it from turning. It just barely will kind of go out, barely kind of coats. Okay, that's the first step. Okay. Now, this particular reel has mag magnetic drag uh, features on the side. And I've tried different settings, and this particular reel, this is a, and every reel is different. Every reel has a different kind of setting that you have to work with. This happens to be a favorite, and this is the Solar Series by Favorite. And I find that I set it on about a five. That's just my favorite, is a five. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty good. Now, it means I can cast, and I don't have to put a lot of line pressure on with my thumb. See, whenever you make a cast, you have to kind of feather the spool with your thumb. Okay, that's the first step. Okay, so let's let's try that again. I'm gonna feather the spool with the thumb right here. See it? I'm feathering it. Okay, right there. I'm feathering the spool with the thumb. Now, to get more distance, to get more distance, I'd, I'd loosen it up a little bit more. I'd loosen the side deal a little bit. Now it's getting real free. And number two, I'd come back and back into about a four or three. Now, here's the problem. It's so loose, it'll get a backlash real easy. If you don't put the right spool pressure, watch this. I won't put the right spool pressure. Watch it, look at it, get all, see that? Look at that, it backlashed. Because I didn't have the right spool pressure on there. Okay, so now, you have to have your thumb on a spool every time to prevent that. Now, I, like, I like this lighter setting, but I also have the thumb on the spool the whole time. Let's get this line out. Now, also when you when you're pulling this loose line off a reel, get it all out. Don't leave little loops. That, and I'm going to explain what happens disasters that happen with little loops left in the line. Let me explain that. Okay, let's let's reel this up. Now that it's all nice and and, and loose, now I can put a little thumb pressure on here. Watch this thumb pressure. Little thumb pressure. Look how far it goes. Boom, a lot farther. A little bit of thumb pressure with this always, always pressure. Okay, let's get it back to where I started. A little bit, a little bit of drag pressure here on the on the spool tension. A little bit, the number five setting. Okay, and it's about right. That's what we want to do. Okay, that's the first thing. That's the first disaster we've avoided. The backlash itself. Okay, now here's here's another disaster. Let me just paint another picture, and that is, <laughs> let me make a cast. And I'll get I'll get it where if I can let me get a cast and I'll get a loop on the line. Okay, look at that. Look at this. Look at this line loop. It's coming out. The line loop's coming right off the spool. If you can see it, it's coming right there. That's a line loop. Now that line loop. If I make a long hard cast, that line loop will bang around on the inside of that reel as it spins, and it'll cut that line. The line will cut. And watch 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 this. I'm going to make a long hard cast and watch what happens. Well, it didn't break, it didn't break, but I'm gonna just pull something. I'm just gonna come back till I find that it was hitting against the spool real hard. And I'm thinking it really weakened it. It's right here. Oh, look at that. I pulled about one pound of pressure, about one pound of pressure and the line broke because that loop, it cut itself on the on the arbor of the, of the inside spool. When it re revolves around like that, the friction builds up and hits against the side of the, of the spool, uh, of, of the reel, the arbors, and, and all the little pillars, and it just cuts the line. It just, it, it, it just destroys your line. So you have to always watch that. Now, I'm, I'm going to pull this line back in. I don't want to have it out there on the water. 
Okay, you saw what happened when that little loop was revolving around as fast as it was. It cut the line. And when I finally pulled to that point, just one pound of pressure, the line was gone. You'd have lost a good fish if, if, if that had been uh, the case. Okay, what about line itself? This happens to be monofilament, but I want to talk a little bit about braid and fluorocarbon. Let me show you. Okay, folks, let's talk a little bit about line itself. Let's talk about monofilament. Let's talk about uh, the fluorocarbon that you hear so much about. And let's talk about braid. Well, I use all three, but number one, I use probably more monofilament than anything. And the number one line I like to use on a casting rod is 14 pound test line. The 14 pound test line, I have it on this right here. It makes a beautiful, beautiful combination for say open water uh, plastic worm fishing. Say I'm fishing the uh, areas of uh, Central Florida. Say I'm fishing Okeechobee. Say I'm fishing the lines of, of Hydrilla uh, over at the Stick Marsh and, and uh, places like the Headwaters Pond. All those kind of places. The 14 pound test monofilament seems to suit my purpose when it's not real, real heavy thick cover. Well, what about when it is real, real heavy thick cover? Well. Let me just go to another rod and reel. And that is, this is a rod and reel just like the other one. The only difference is it had a, a little worm on it with a 16th of an ounce hook. It was a five inch Cinco just like this one on a four rod EWG hook. The only difference is this happens to be 30 pound test braid. Now I use 30 pound test braid and also 50 pound test braid. You notice I've darkened that a little bit with a magic marker. Okay, now, what about the casting of braid? How does the casting of braid stack up to monofilament? Well, it probably doesn't loop as bad. It probably doesn't loop as bad, but it does backlash. So again, just like I did with the monofilament setup, I had to adjust the side spool, a little bit of tension, and I had to adjust the brake to about a number five, just, just a little bit. And I need to thumb it just like I did with the monofilament. There's no difference in the way it casts because it will backlash just like monofilament will backlash. Okay, but the advantage with braid is this. The advantage with braid is number one, it's a heavier line, it's a thinner line. So it goes deep and quick and it, and it has very little stretch. And so braid, I like braid for the fact that in heavy cover, I can set the hook good and I can get the fish out of some really heavy cover. So that's braid. Okay, now let's take, let's take another line. Let's take fluorocarbon. Okay, fluorocarbon is a whole different animal. Fluorocarbon sinks faster than monofilament. So if you're, you don't want to use it for a topwater plug, it's fine for worms, it's fine for, for jigs, it's, it's all right for spinnerbaits. I'd rather use uh, monofilament for spinnerbaits than I would uh, fluorocarbon, but still fluorocarbon for uh, plastic worms is a good choice. But fluorocarbon's hard to manage. Fluorocarbon backlash is real easy. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your reel is really adjusted, the side spool is adjusted to the right, right tension, and your and your magnetic brake is adjusted to that like I like, like a five on the solace reel. And you have to use that thumb pressure. You have to educate yourself to always feather the thumb on the spool. Okay, fluorocarbon's great. It's more invisible to the fish. It sets the hook a little bit better than monofilament. But the other downside, it's five times more expensive. So actually, when you come right down to it, I probably use more of the, of the monofilament and the braid than I do the fluorocarbon. But the fluorocarbon has its place, don't get me wrong. Remember, avoid line disasters. Watch, adjust your reel property. Keep, keep that backlash situation down, and if there's a loop in the line, get it out. Don't let it happen, and don't let it cut your line. So folks, I, I hope you've enjoyed watching this YouTube, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.